Well, welcome back to our Bible survey class. Tonight, we're wrapping up our New Testament survey. We're going to wrap up by wrapping up Revelation. And tonight, I just prepare everyone. It's going to be a totally different study than we've done thus far. It's going to be a very short study. And uh, I hope to create a lot of questions from our study tonight. And uh, everyone in here is entitled to a question except for one individual. And I'm not going to mention Diane's name, so don't ask me who it is. All right? No, I'm just teasing. She knows that. All right, well, let, let's pray, and, and we'll get into our study. Let's pray together. Father God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity we have now to get into your word. And Lord, as we wrap up our survey of the New Testament... Actually, the wrapping up of the, our entire Bible survey. We thank you, Father, for what we have learned. We thank you for what we have seen and have discovered. And now, Lord, we pray that you once again speak into our hearts and our minds from your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's begin reading the first three verses in Revelation chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show to his bondservants the things which must shortly take place. And he sent and communicated it by his angel to his bondservant, John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and hear, heeds the things which are written in it, for the time is near. So let's begin by understanding that this wonderful book of Revelation was written by the Apostle John during a time of extreme persecution. Now, as we know, John has been in exile on the island of Patmos. And some speculate he was working the mines there, and others speculate he was too ill and too uh, physically unable to help, but irrelevant, he was there. And he was exiled for preaching and teaching the gospel. Now, this book is not written to be a book of confusion. But this letter, this book, is written for the primary purpose of encouraging Christians during difficult times, including persecution. Now, let me just say this book may be, and this is just Mike's opinion, but I think this book may be one of the most misused, mistaught, misunderstood book in the entire New Testament. The primary purpose, again, of this book was to incur encourage Christians. Now, throughout this book, we find many symbols. And these symbols uh, would mean nothing to the Roman authorities, yet it would speak volumes to the believers. And the symbols is a message that Christ is Lord. So now let's think about this for a moment. This letter is written and we're going to use the word code, in code, because of the persecution that was taking place. Why would John write in code? Because he did not want to jeopardize the lives of believers throughout this region. So, the Christians would understand, but the Romans were confused. Now, there's all kinds of uh, ways, modern views on how to look at this, and we're not really 
we're not really going to get into that tonight. But I want you to know there's multiple views, multiple ways people say of understanding this letter. However, let me say this, no matter what view you may take, it must all fit together with the other books of the scripture. Revelation is not a book, a separate book alone. It is included in the entire canon of the Bible. So, with that said, the book of Revelation provides a powerful ending for the Bible. In the end, God and his people win. Evil will be forever defeated. And that, my friends, is the book of Revelation. Thanks for coming. No, I'm just teasing on that part. It's not going to be much longer, though. But much of this book, much of this book is a story of the work of the sins increasing on this earth, resulting in suffering of Christians and non-believers alike. And it will climax to a time of woe that's never before been experienced on this earth. However, the good news is Jesus will return and set things right. So let me address the audience. It was written for all believers throughout the ages, but especially for the believers in the seven churches we see addressed in chapters two through three. Now these churches were basically located in what we would consider modern Turkey today. And they would consist of a large majority of Gentile believers who were meeting in various locations, including house churches. Now, I want to share with you, and we're, we're going to look at these verses, the key verses that I think are key verses found in this letter. Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. I, John, your brother and fellow partaker in the tribulation and kingdom and perseverance which are in Jesus was on the island called Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Now jump down to verse 19. Write therefore the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which shall take place after these things. So we could say, from looking at that single verse there in verse 19, that Revelation is broken into three parts. Things that are happening, which are, things which are about to happen, and things that will happen in the future. Now, another key verse we find is in chapter 13, chapter 13, verses 16 and 17. And he calls us all, the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hand and on their forehead. Now, we're not going to get in a lot of details, but this describes to us that there will be a separation, a separation of those who follow Christ and those who follow Satan. In chapter 19, verse 11, we see where John talks about a heaven, heaven opening up. And behold, 
a writer. So, what is this writer, or excuse me, who is this writer, and what is about to happen? Verse 11, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat upon it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and wages war. That should give Christians hope. Because just like in the days of the Old Testament prophets. Those who cried out to God. How long, O Lord? How long? Here we see God says, one day will come. And I will return. He who is faithful and true. And he will make war with the wicked. I want to give you two more that I, I like. And they're found in chapter 21. Beginning in verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away. And there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he shall dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be among them. And he shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall no longer be any death, there shall no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Right, for these words are faithful and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the springs of the water of life without cost. He who overcomes, hear the words of encouragement, shall inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. And then let's look at one more verse, or I should say verses. And that's found in the very last chapter. Beginning in verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride says, come. And let the one who hears say, come. And let the one who is thirsty, come. Let the one who wishes take the water of life without cost. I testify to everyone who hears the word, words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God shall add to him the plagues which are in written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the tree of life and from the holy city, which are written in this book. He who testifies to these things says, yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Amen. So, to give you a quick uh, outline or breakdown of this wonderful letter that we know of Revelation. In chapter 1, we discover that, that John is standing face to face with Jesus, receiving the word in which he is about to write. And Jesus says, write therefore. Now, 
And chapter 2 focuses on Jesus. And so the major theme, again, is stand firm, be encouraged. Chapter 3, the message to the seven churches. Chapter 4 emphasizes to those who listen and obey, the Spirit will overcome and will receive the promise of God. Chapters 5 through 11 is a vision of Christ judging the world. Chapter 12, we could simply say, are various events and peoples. Chapter 13 is where we meet and are introduced to the two beasts. 14 through 18, we discover the seven bowls and the great harlot. Chapter 19 and 20 is the second coming of Christ and the judgment to come. In chapters 21 and 22, we discover the new Jerusalem. Now, the way that I understand Revelation is Revelation is written in a cyclical pattern. In other words, Jesus tells John, hey John, these things are going to happen. He takes them out to a point. And then Jesus goes back to the beginning and he takes and he reviews the same wash, rinse, repeat, the same thing and he takes us a little farther past. Then he goes back and takes us a little farther past. It's a cycle. That's why if you look in Revelation, and we're not going to go into much more detail, but you will see that it talks about Satan from the very beginning. It talks about the birth of Jesus. And so the best way to read Revelation is to understand that Revelation is written in a form that many mountain folk people would speak when they tell you a story. They'll tell you part of a story and then they say, oh, wait a minute, let's go back, I forgot to tell you. And they start at the very beginning and they tell you, and this time they include Grandpa Charlie or Uncle Fred or whatever, and they'll get to a point and they'll say, oh, wait a minute, I forgot, and they go all the way back. That's the book of Revelation. So in our time remaining now, I would like to share with you the Beatitudes found in the book of Revelation. Most of the time when we talk about the Beatitudes, we always turn to what book of the Bible? Matthew, Matthew. But in the book of Revelation, we find seven Beatitudes. I'm going to give you the text. We'll simply read the text, and that will basically conclude our study tonight. The first one is found in chapter 1, verse 3. There we read, Blessed is anyone who reads the words of this prophecy, and blessed those who hear them, if they treasure the content because the time is near. So the first beatitude is blessed are those who read, hear, and I will say, follow through. The second one we find all the way back in chapter 14. Chapter 14. And I'm going to read from a very simplified translation. But there we read chapter 14, verse 13. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. Blessed indeed. The Spirit says, now they can rest forever after their work, since their good deeds go with them. This is referring to their doctrine, their merits, the things that they hold fast to. Okay? Okay. Number three, it's found in chapter 16, chapter 16, verse 15.
blessed is the one who stays awake and keeps his garments lest he walk about naked and men see his shame now the simple translation says this blesses anyone who has kept watch and has kept his clothes on so that he does not go out naked and expose his shame of course it's not a literal clothes don't get caught up in that those who keep the word of God those who stand firm in the word of God those who watch and heed number four is found in Revelation chapter 19 verse 9 blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb and he said to me these are true words of God now the, the simplified says this blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast do we do we read in any other New Testament writings about those who are invited to a wedding feast yes it's found in the book of Matthew as well the wedding feast the groom returning for his bride number five we find in Revelation chapter 20 verse 6 Revelation 20 verse 6 the New American Standard puts it this way blessed and holy is the one who has a part in the first resurrection over these the second death has no power but they will they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him for a thousand years don't get hung up on the terminology here understanding uh, that the the first death is one's physical death the second death is a failure to enter in to eternal life. And the thousand years is just representation for a period of time. Don't get in the weeds. Number six. We discover in chapter 22, verse 7. Blessed is he who heeds the words of the prophecy of this book. And then number seven is found in verse 14 of chapter 22. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter the gates into the city. Again, Revelation is a book to be taken as a whole, as a conclusion to the whole of the Bible. Words of encouragement, words of grace, mercy, and the promise of a victory of those who are in Christ. Now, I know tonight's been a little different study. But again, I think we have studied the book of Revelation here more <laughs> than perhaps any other book uh, since I've been here in almost 24 years. And so I, I hope that what I have shared with you tonight will cause you to have questions and will cause you to seek out for yourself the meaning, the understanding, but by all means, May the words that I've shared with you tonight give you hope to persevere, to stand firm, and look to the one who said, come quickly. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you, Father, for the study tonight, even though uh, it uh, is a short one. I pray, Father, that you help us to just continue to seek you out, to continue to hold fast your word 
Blessed is he, your word says, blessed is he who hears and heeds and reads and stands firm. So, Father, may we do exactly that. May we be blessed because we have had our robes cleansed with the blood of the Lamb. May we be blessed because we have the right to feed on the tree of life. And may we be blessed in your coming soon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all for coming.